What's up everyone? I'm going to illustrate how to think like a programmer. A lot of times people seem to think that programming just involves learning a computer programming language, which is true. That's a very key component of it, obviously. However, there's much more to it than that. One thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to be able to break down large complex problems into smaller, uh, more bite-sized problems that you can deal with. To me, that was one of the most difficult things about learning to program is I made the assumption that a lot of programming was just learning the language and doing whatever I wanted to using that particular program. I guess I thought of computer programming languages as a program of itself, which I guess kind of it is, as opposed to being a tool to help me solve a variety of problems. One of the most difficult things that I had to figure out how to do was take logic of what the problem was asking me to uh, arrive at and break that logic down into sequential steps and then translate those sequential steps into particular syntax. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just because uh, the way my brain works or what, that took me a long time to figure out. And looking back on it, I probably would have ordered this book called uh, Head First Problem Solving. I think it's something like that. I, I have the Ruby version, but I should have gotten the head first problem solving or head first thinking like a programmer because it teaches you how to systematically break down problems and solve them in an analytical and procedural manner. All right, so let's take a look at this problem and I'll see if I can solve it. I mean, I've solved it before, but it's been a minute, but we'll see how that goes. All right, so well, actually, let me go ahead and paste this in here. So we got this right here. And this interface isn't necessarily a uh, programming interface. Well, I should take that back. It is, but this is called uh, CoderPad. And basically a lot of companies and, and even some schools use this to teach students how to program. And if you're applying for a job, chances are they're probably gonna utilize CoderPad to test your skills. And you can uh, use a variety of languages as you can see here. I've been studying Ruby, so that's what I'm going to use today. I wonder if I can expand this window out or if this needs to stay this size. I think this would be fine. All right, so our problem is a string is considered to be in title case if each word in the string is either A, capitalized, that is only the first letter of the word is in uppercase, or B, considered to be an exception and put entirely into lowercase unless it is the first word which is always capitalized. Write a function that will convert a string into title case, given an optional list of exceptions, minor words. The list of minor words will be given as a string with each word separated by a space. Your function should ignore the case of the minor word string. It should behave in the same way even if the case of the minor word string is changed. Arguments Haskell. Uh, Haskell is a programming language. First argument, space delimited list of minor words that must always be lowercase except for the first word in the string. Second argument, the original string to be converted. Okay, first argument. I think all of this is just explaining uh, the different names for the different parameters or arguments based upon the language. So, yeah, here we go. Okay, and this is what they want down here. I think I can just get rid of all of this since I'm not worried about Haskell. And as you can see, even before I get to the problem, I'm having to break down just what the problem is and what it's asking me. I don't think you would necessarily get something uh, like this on a job interview. I mean, I'm nowhere near that level yet, but well, I mean, you'd probably get a problem of, of this difficulty, but not necessarily having all this extra text that does not pertain to the problem. All right, so first argument, space limit, list of minor words. I think I can get rid of all this stuff. So I think this is just related to Haskell. And I think this is just giving specific, you know, aspects if you use JavaScript or whatever. All right. So a few things that I'm going to do first. Um, let me go ahead and write down kind of what I'm going to do this is not necessarily me solving the problem i'm just going to kind of explain uh, my thought process and my eventual steps to the problem so the first thing that you have to do is uh, you definitely need to have the problem so you need to figure out what it's asking you to do so uh, that'd be 
understand the problem, figure out what it is that you have to do. Um, particularly with Code Wars, you're probably going to uh, set up the method name. So um, that's something, something down there. Uh, You don't necessarily have to do this in this order. This is just my approach because it kind of helps me keep track of all the information. Um, yeah, definitely want to remove any excess text, like stuff that's not relevant to the problem itself, like what I did before with Haskell and JavaScript. Um, I think that's kind of it for this portion of it um yeah I, I think that should be good all right so now what, what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the problem itself and then i'm going to break it down into individual steps i'm going to look for examples that we can see that are already included in this uh, example here on line 25 and then i'm going to describe what my data structure is going to be like if i'm going to use arrays or hashes then i'm going to write my algorithm and then i'm going to go into the coding aspect of itself Generally, when you're programming, you're going to uh, ideally, I, I guess maybe it might be an exception if you're a really seasoned professional developer and you know what you're doing. But for the most part, you're going to spend more time thinking about the problem, writing out steps to solve the problem, and uh, hopefully not debugging your problem. But uh, that it helps to make sure that you have all of your logic uh, lined up in a sequential manner before you, you even begin coding. So let's take a look at this. All right, so we got a problem here. All right, so this, uh, let me move this back up here. So this portion here, uh, a string is considered to be in title case. This is kind of like uh, what would be known as problem domain. This is letting you know what a title case is, what are the specifics of this particular problem. Sometimes you might get a problem that tells you about a story or whatever, and you have to figure out what those different words mean. And then this line 13 down here is telling me what the program should do. These are my examples. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy all of this. This is just a, a little step that I do to help me visually see everything. I think I'm more of a visual learner. So I'm going to do this here. It's not mandatory, but. It's just all about trying to make this a lot easier to approach. And if you're like listening to this or watching this and you see me uh, like read this problem, you're probably, if you don't have any programming or uh, I guess a word problem experience breaking down stuff, you're probably like, what the hell is that? Like, what is this stuff even talking about? And that can be one of the most difficult parts in the beginning is just taking a step back, looking at the problem and trying to think rationally and then breaking it down because you're going to have to take a high level approach, I guess, and then reverse it. And then you got to start from the bottom and go to the top. <laughs> Started at the bottom, not at the top. All right, so here we go. All right, the problem. And this is known as PDAC. This is a, uh, just a problem solving uh, process that you can use. And then below this comment section, I'm going to write out code. Uh, the reason all, all of the text is gray is because I did this command up here on line one equals begin and then down on line 39 equals end. In Ruby, uh, pretty much all languages I assume have a way where you can just write comments that are not code. So I just did equals begin equals end so that way I can just write a bunch of stuff so the computer doesn't think it's code. All right, so I'm going to copy this section here since this is our problem and I'm going to place it in here. Now the reason why I copied it and I didn't just uh, cut it and put it in there is because I like to do this as well when I'm uh, if I'm manipulating a specific part of code or syntax and I want to test something out. I like to copy it and paste it so that way if I make a mistake I still have the original. Uh, and some assessments like uh, you might have to I don't know, change a particular piece or something because you're debugging and you don't want to have to uh, like try to remember what exactly was what during a time constraint. So it's just a good habit to kind of section everything off and move it around as opposed to uh, just cutting it, I guess. 
All right, so for my problem here, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to, a string is considered to be in title case if each word in the string is either A capitalized, that is only the first letter of the word is in uppercase, or B considered to be an exception and put entirely into lowercase unless it is the first word, which is always capitalized. So there's like three uh, different aspects of the problem that are all right there that are describing what title case is. So I'm just going to break these down. So that's going to be uh, capitalized. And then I'm going to uh, tab this in as this is like a portion of capitalized. Yeah, so maybe I should do this. Let's go right here. Or And one little thing that I like to do is just uh, for the, the different sections of a problem that I have to figure out or solve, I just put a couple of dashes or a dash. And then when I actually finish that portion, I will just put a plus just to visually let me know that I've already solved that portion of the problem or it's done. And then we have here another section which would technically like be like a C. Kind of unless it is the first word, which is always capitalized. So instead of looking at this whole paragraph all at once and seeing all this text, I'm breaking it down so I can take in each piece one at a time. All right, so this is kind of like explaining what everything is. And now I'm going to do the same thing to the portion of the problem that's telling me what to do for each aspect of it. All right, so now I need to, all right, so the problem has explained what title case is. Now it's telling me what it wants me to do in terms of applying that to a computer program. Write a function that will convert a string into title case. So that's uh, pretty much one portion. So I'm going to do that like that. Actually, let me do this here. No, that's fine. So write a function that will convert a string into title case. And then we'll have this here. I'm going to do uh, given an optional list of exceptions, minor words. Okay, so we got that. The list of minor words will be given as a string with each word separated by a space. So that's another component. Your function should ignore the case of the minor word string. So that's uh, what it's telling me. And then it's going into a little further detail. So I'm going to make this like a sub process of this. Okay. All right, so that's everything for this so far. And I'm, and if you notice, I haven't even started coding yet. I, I don't have hardly any syntax in here at all, other than like my comment section. So I'm going to now go down to examples. And I'm going to take all of these examples. And these, I was going to say I'm going to cut them, but I'm not. I'm going to copy them because just in case something happens. But I will move uh, these out of here and I'm going to place them into the code section because they are code. And now what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to augment this so that way when a program runs, it would actually be implemented correctly using Ruby. So let's see here. So this is our method name, title case. This is a, an argument one, argument two. So it's saying it should return this. All right, so I'm going to do this. Actually, let me get rid of this end here. There we go. Okay, Clash of Kings. All right. Can I expand this out a little bit so it doesn't jam up on the screen? There we go. All right, so we got that there. The end. So this is going to be, and the reason I do equals is because it's going to 
check that the ultimate, I guess, use a basic term like a final process of the program is going to equal what I expect it to. So if I tell it I'm passing in this and this section here, I want the final result of the program to equal this and it'll tell me true or false. But that will basically be the return value of the program. And then for this one, we're going to do equals equals here. So and then we'll have to do a P for print. So that way it will output it to the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and write the uh, method definition and the parameters. This is probably like text or something. That string is fine. And then you might have uh, seen that in the problem, it was talking about another parameter. This other parameter is known as minor words. So this minor words is what I'm just going to use right here. So minor words. Okay. That should be good. Go ahead and give it another space there. All right. So, so far, I really haven't done any coding. I mean, I kind of did because I, you know, I just wrote this method definition and these uh, method out or these method invocations, passing in a couple arguments. Just to explain what that is, uh, a method is just, um, think of it as like a definition. That's why it has defined in the front of it. And what you're doing with the method is your basically writing a little mini program that you can call to use again. So you can think of like a mage, like if they're going to invoke a spell, in this case, you're invoking a method. So you can either say you're going to call a method or invoke it. And when you write the definition, as you can see here, like string and minor words, those are called parameters. So you're kind of giving certain parameters to your method for what it's expected to work with. And when you actually pass something into it, it becomes what's known as a, uh, an argument and you pass in arguments to your method. All right, so let's take a look at this again. Um, what you have to do, set the method parameters. All right, so that's there. I'm gonna just remove that for now just to uh, be able to see everything better. Okay, so all this is still up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and focus on this down here. And let me take a look at the problem. Um, a string is considered to be in title case if each word in the string is either capitalized, that is only the first letter of the word is in uppercase, or considered to be an exception and put entirely into a lowercase, unless it is the first word, which is always capitalized. Okay. Write a function that will convert a string into title case. Given an optional list of exceptions, minor words, the list of minor words will be given as a string with, with each word separated by a space. Let me format that a little bit. Your function should ignore the case of the minor words string. It's got all discombobulated when I moved everything around. And uh, I didn't say this before, but uh, method and function are pretty much synonymous. So when they're saying function, it just means method. I guess most languages call methods functions. Ruby just calls them methods. It's like uh, in other languages, you have hashes or you have dictionaries. In Ruby, you have hashes. Then it says the list of minor words will be given as a string with each word separated by a space. Your function should ignore the case of the minor word string. It should behave in the same way even if the case of the minor word string is change. Okay, so some of this stuff, it's like, what the hell did they even mean? All right, so I'm going to try to clarify all of this in here. And just from thinking about this, um, I think for the most part, my data structure is going to be arrays. So I'm just going to write arrays just so I kind of think about what I'm working with. Okay, capitalized. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write out my algorithm. 
uh, all an algorithm is is just a series of steps that you use to implement a solution to any given problem. For my algorithm here, I'm going to make it really high level and just kind of uh, summarizing the problem itself. And then below it, I'm going to do like a separate pseudocode slash step by step breakdown of the problem. So that way, if I'm working through this and my pseudocode or my logic is off, I don't have to go back and change my algorithm. All right, so what is, for my algorithm, I'm gonna basically just summarize a problem. So what is it that the problem wants me to do? Looking at the examples that they give me here, um, let me get rid of this section. It's giving me a string or some text. I'll, I'll use this one down here since it's color highlighted. It's giving me some text, a clash of kings. So we see here that this kings is entirely capitalized. That's known as upcase. And the minor words are a and the of in a clash of kings there. Okay. Then we have the wind and the willows is all capitalized. And then in the minor words, we have the and in. Yet in the solution, it's every word is capitalized with the exception of the and in except for this first one here, which is still capitalized. And keep in mind that capitalized and upcase is different. Uh, capitalized uh, means that the word has the first letter capitalized, and upcase means that every single uh, letter in the word is capitalized, or upcase. And then for this one, uh, this is a little tricky here, the quick brown fox equals the quick brown fox. So if you look on these other ones, the there are two arguments. So this one here and this one here, and we have two parameters. But for this one, there isn't one. And I haven't encountered that too much, but I think what we would do here is just do um, minor words equals empty string. And what that does is it sets a default parameter. So in case someone doesn't en or enter anything into the method, it will default to an empty string. All right, so given a string of characters, actually I should say two arguments. Well, string of characters and a string called minor words. Return a string that capitalizes every word unless the word is in minor words. And I'm pretty sure that this is the same thing that we're going for here. Yeah, I think that's about right. So how am I going to go about solving this? Let me just double check everything in the problem to make sure that my understanding is correct. A string is considered to be in title case if each word in the string is either capitalized. That is only the first letter of the word is in uppercase. Oh, okay. So yeah, so it could still technically be something like, um, if I had, well, that's interesting how they have that. Oh, wait, so. That is only the first letter of the word is an uppercase. Okay. Or considered to be an exception and put entirely into lowercase. Unless it is the first word. Okay. So this right here is just explaining, like I said before, exactly what their version of uh, title case is. And then this is just giving me the breakdown of what the problem is and what they want me to do. So some of this can be a little complex. I can't, I've solved this problem before, so I kind of understand this a little better. Sometimes your problems might be a little more convoluted than they need to be. But I think for like a job interview or something like that, they're going to be pretty straightforward with what they expect you to do. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, so that's my algorithm, then my pseudocode. 
All right, so I'm going to say I'm going to give it be given a string. Uh, I think I might have a result array. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm um, just go ahead and set it aside for now. I think depending on how I go about solving this, create a result array. And for a result array, um, well, an array is the is a data structure that you can use to contain objects or whatever. So if I have an array, it's going to begin with a, a bracket and end with a bracket. And so right now my local variable array is initialized to an empty array. So if I want to have an array that has something in it, I'm going to like one, two, three, and then you have your array. And there are, are a variety of methods that you can utilize to do things to the array. So I can use the each method and have a block. And during each iteration, or basically it's a loop. So each time that it goes through this uh, method, what's going to happen is that those parameters with num are going to be passed to the do end block. And in turn, they're going to be initialized as a, uh, a local variable within that array. So it's going to output the number each time for each thing. And each, it's a method that was made for arrays. And it's just going to return the original array. It doesn't do anything to it. So that's kind of like a little mini example of what arrays are. So I'm going to use arrays. Probably going to have a result array. So let me just go ahead and make one here. Oh, I shouldn't do that in my code yet. So create a result array. And then I'm going, since I have this uh, string of words, so I have a string of words, and then I have minor words. All right, so what I'm going to do, in order for me to work with these individual words more easily, I'm going to break that string down into actual words. So I'm going to do, um, yes, I'm going to do, uh, convert string into words and then I would uh, convert and um, actually looking at this I think it might just be easier you know well, I am still going to convert them into words so I have that now what is my next step of the process going to be what is my objective my objective is to make sure that the string and this the words in this first string are in a uh, capitalized state so i think it would be easier to just um, capitalize every word in the string so i'm just thinking like if i have to capitalize all of them with the exception of the minor words so what it wants me to do is it wants me, like given this string, it wants me to make this string look like this string. And all a string is, is just like a series of characters. Like when you watch the matrix and you see all that text floating up the screen, that's a, a string. So it's telling me it wants me to capitalize every word in the string unless it's in the minor words. So I'm thinking I would just go ahead and capitalize all of the words. And then if the word is in the minor words, I will downcase it. Granted, this isn't very efficient and it probably gets to the point where you have to be more efficient with your programming, but you know, I'm still learning and I'll, I'll get there at some point. But the most important thing, the way I look at it is like, does it work? All right, cool. <laughs> if it works, then that, that's good for me. All right, so I'm gonna capitalize every word in the string and then after I capitalize every word in the string, um, I'm going to uh, push every capitalized word to the result array. And then I'm going to say, if the current word kind of goes back to that iteration of the array that I just illustrated, if the current word is in the minor words array, down case it and then after I do all of that I'm going to say uh, capitalize the first word 
So let's see how this would work if this is actually working out pretty good. Let me make sure my phone's off. All right. So result equals this. All right. So we have a clash of kings as a string. So over here, I say string equals this. And there's our string. And we're going to say minor words equals this. Okay, so I'm going to say um, words equals string dot split minor words equals minor words dot split. So I'm just going to double check, make sure everything that I just wrote works in IRB, which is this terminal over here. Um, I could just copy and paste it, but I like to uh, just write everything out to get some more muscle memory. Hold on, I think I'm going to sneeze. All right, nope, just enough to stop the flow of my concentration. Okay, and then uh, minor words equals minor words, minor words dot split. Okay, so we got words and we got minor words. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lowercase, not lowercase, I'm going to capitalize every word in that array. So I'm going to say um, capitalized equals words dot map do word word dot capitalize and i'll explain what this is in a second all right so what i'm doing here is i'm creating a uh, a local variable named capitalized and i'm initializing it initialize just means uh, that you're creating a variable and i'm assigning it to the return value of the array method map being invoked or used or called, you would say called or invoked, onto that array of words. And you remember the illustra the uh, the example with array in each? Each doesn't, uh, it just returns the original calling object. Map returns the uh, transform values of the array. So I can save that. Actually, I think I could just do the same thing with each. And I might not need to use map. Let me, let me double check. I, actually, uh, yeah, that was right. Yeah, I was just double checking that. I mean, I know that each uh, returns the original calling object, but I just want to double check and by using map, I can save that transform value as a return value and assign it to a new variable. So that way it's just kind of separated. So now as you can see here, how it says answer and it's just the original array of words. So yeah, see how that's the same thing. Now I'm going to use map, which is kind of like each, it kind of does the same thing, except that it saves the transformed value. And by transformed, I just mean like, Right now, these words are either lowercase or all capital. When I use map, I'm going to tell it, okay, so for every word in this array, capitalize that word. And then it's going to save it to this new value called capitalized. So as you can see now, every word is capitalized, which is exactly what we wanted. But when we do, uh, like if we were to do uh, each capitalized, dang it, it's the downside of doing stuff in IRB. If you make one mistake, it's over. But it does teach you to type with precision, I'll tell you that much. So you see we did each capitalized. And since we invoked the each method on it, 
it's just giving us back the original object. But when we used map, we got the return value, the new return value. Okay, so um, I created a results array. I did that up here. So actually, let me go ahead and mark all of these and then go through and plus them all since I'm done with them. All right, so far, so good. All right, so I uh, created a result array, so I'm going to change that to a plus. I converted the string into words, so let's go to change that to a plus. I converted the string of minor words into words. I did that, so let's change that. I capitalized every word in the string, and so far I did that. Um, it can take a while to build the fluency that is required to systematically break down problems like this. I mean, before I was doing a bunch of these, like uh, I, I worked on some problems for days, like <laughs> for whatever reason, I just could not condense these problems down and break them down. And uh, just through a sheer force of will, I guess I just kept that in. I, I got better at it over time, but it just takes practice. Some people naturally get it, but for some reason, like I had the inverse problem that most people have. A lot of people have difficulty uh, solving the problem or thinking it through on how to, like what the problem is asking, what to do. I could do that relatively quickly. It was just like implementing it in syntax. That was just always difficult for me. And I think it's because I think in such a high level, like I think like abstractly, like high level concepts, that's just how my brain works. And for me to go down into the nitty gritty of like the trenches to like implement this was just like a hell of a process. So if you're starting out programming and it's taking a little bit or you're looking at this stuff like what the hell like there's a lot of advanced concepts in here like i've spent a long time understanding all of this and if you can pick this up in no time that's awesome you know pursue programming because it's going to be great if not uh, keep at it and over time you can get good at it and be uh you know it'll change you for the better like you'll be more patient you'll uh, be able to systematically solve different things, even things outside of programming. And it's kind of fascinating. You'll want to uh, solve puzzles that you normally wouldn't really care to solve. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to this. And basically what that tangent was, is I'm just trying to illustrate the point that there's a lot going on here and it can take some time to be able to break everything down. So let's see what happens. All right, so I capitalize every word in the string that I did. All right, now I'm going to push every capitalized word to the result array. If the current word is in minor words array, down case it. This might need to be uh, switched around. So I'm not sure. So I'm going to double check this here. So I have minor words. All right, so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I'm going to iterate how we did it with the array. I'm going to iterate through the capitalized array. And I'm going to tell Ruby, uh, hey, Ruby, if this current word, and when I say current word, um, if you look over here on the syntax, like line 19, so uh, maybe, let me go ahead and do this in terms of a, uh, like, so you can see it during each iteration, maybe. So let's do, um, what do we have for array? All right, so let's say like array equals 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is zero, one, two, three, like this. And then you can see that this is the original amount. During each iteration or each portion of the loop, I told Ruby to print out the current number. And between these two pipes is what's known as a parameter. And the parameter is this, you can call it whatever you want. But I called it num to represent these numbers here. And so I told Ruby during each iteration, every time you get to every number in that array, print it out. So that's what it did. It did zero, one, two, three, and then it exited out. So that's what I'm going to try to do over here. I'm going to say, um, basically, I'm going to tell Ruby, iterate through this capitalized array. And then if the current word in that array is also in that uh, minor words or array, downcase it. So let's see if this works out right. Actually, I wonder if I should just push this to the result. Oh, well, let's see what happens. All right, so, well, actually, let me write this down a little bit. So what am I doing? I am 
Oh, I'll leave that there. I might move this in there. So I am iterating through the capitalized array. If the current word in the array is also in minor words, down case that word. Well, that's not a separate portion. All right, so, okay. Let's see here. Minor, minor words dot include word. Probably doing this wrong. If minor word, this was another thing. I always, for some reason, it took me a while to uh, get used to the include because, like, if you're gonna say like does the word cat include the letter a but i guess with like programming a lot of times it would be like does a dot include cat or something it was just like kind of backwards for me i'm probably saying that wrong all right let me try it over here so capitalize dot oh let me just make sure i still have capitalized okay then do i still have minor words okay capitalize dot each do word um, I'm just going to do like a printout just to make sure I'm kind of doing the syntax right for this. So let's do if minor words dot include word p word. Yeah, so I'm getting it mixed up again. I did it backwards. Oh, you know what? It's because um, it's not going to find it. It's because minor words is uh, lowercase so those lowercase words are never going to be in there that's why that is happening all right so let's try another one hmm. let me make a separate example maybe so clash of kings Capitalize dot each do word. Mm. All right. So minor words. Oh yeah. So what's going on is like I just said with it not being down case. So I'm going to try iterating through it and saying if this current word down case equals a word that's in minor words down case, then print it. I'll show you what I mean. Right, so let's try this again. So capitalized, capitalized dot each do word. If minor words dot include word dot down case, I wonder if I can do it like this. P word. So you can see here that there is a and there is of. And the reason why it didn't find it before is because computers are very literal. So I told it, hey, are these capitalized strings in this you know, uh, array? And it said, no, those capitalized words are not there. But when I told it to look for it being down case, it did find them. So let's go ahead and try to uh, implement that with this solution. So uh, each dude word, each do down case. So capitalize dot each do word. If minor words dot include that current word down case, um, then we would do word dot down case. And destructive or mutating, I think. Let me double check this. So capitalize that each do word if minor words dot include word dot down case. Uh, let's try word dot down case. I'll explain destructive in a minute. I think that worked. All right, cool. 
So in programming, you have destructive and non-destructive methods or mutating and non-mutating methods. And what that means is like you're actually changing the string or the object itself. So if you remember each, it is printed back the original array. That was a non-mutative method. And I guess technically map wasn't mutative because it didn't mutate that original object. But we have a method called downcase and downcase with a bang. And the bang is just the exclamation point. Not every method has the exclamation point if it's going to mutate, but most of them do. And so what this is doing is uh, it's basically changing that original object. So let's do, uh, let's double check this here. So that seemed to work. So capitalize dot each do word. If minor words dot include word dot down case, we're going to tell it to down case dot word. And this is an if statement. So if statements, your conditionals, like if this, then that. And they're essential to, uh, to Ruby. And one thing that I would highly recommend is if you're learning the program, uh, pick up some books on how to think like a programmer, how to deconstruct problems, like I mentioned before. That's essential. Another thing I would recommend is something that I wish I did before is like find other people that might be interested in programming. That helps out a lot because you can study with them. And in addition to that, just like a tip, I would recommend memorizing a bunch of syntax. It's like, you know, start with Ruby because there's a reason why uh, a lot of schools use Ruby is because it's very uh, intuitive. Like when you're learning to program, you want to learn to think like a programmer and just like all the logic and the solving the problem, as opposed to worrying about a bunch of little minor syntactical details that you don't really need to know in the sense of uh, knowing programming itself as a skill. So like memorize, uh, you know, how to do loops, how to uh, use arrays and hashes and if statements, like just memorize all of them. Even if you don't know when to use them or necessarily how to use them, just memorizing that syntax would go a long way because you're not being stuck between trying to figure out the logic of something and then trying to remember the syntax itself. So memorize them. Then after you memorize, you know, like if um, this, else, if that, else, whatever, if you memorize all of those, after that, go through and try to remember when to use each thing. And I think that would help out quite a bit because when you're given a problem, you have like so many tools at your disposal and there's so much stuff that it can be overwhelming. So that's, that's the advice I would give for starting off. So hopefully we're still making some good progress here. So we got capitalize.each do word if minor words don't include word dot down case, word dot down case. So this needs an end here. And then we're going to also need another end for the each method itself because we have a do end block. So that's separate from this. So let's just double check that. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to uh, capitalize the first letter of the word. So I don't think I'm going to end up using this uh, result. I think I did that. And if you're wondering why I'm going to capitalize the first word after I've gone through and already, uh, you know, capitalize them, then lowercase them, it's because the minor words, uh, the way I approach this problem, it lowercased all of the minor words and that that's good but for this particular problem it states that the first letter of our answer always has to be capitalized so that's why now i'm doing that section here so i'm going to do uh i think i can just do capitalize dot um no i'm going to capitalize the first word so i'm going to capitalize I can either do dot first dot capitalize or I could do capitalized square bracket zero square back bracket dot capitalize. And this is exactly the same thing. Let me show you here. So if you have a uh, capitalized here, running too long. I didn't have anything running. All right. I got to redo this because the uh, terminal over there stopped which is kind of good because then you can see everything from the beginning. So we have uh, string is clash of kings. And then we're going to have uh, minor words equals this. 
and we're going to say words equals string dot split. And then we're going to say minor words equals uh, minor words dot split. And then we're going to say capitalized equals words dot map do word and word dot capitalize. I like to either reference or invoke the variable or method when I uh, enter it into IRB just to make sure that everything's working out right. And then uh, capitalize dot each do word if minor words dot include word dot down case. And what I'm doing can actually kind of come back to haunt you in a way because sometimes like what I'm doing now, I'm entering, I'm entering everything individually. So it's creating new objects for the most part for each thing. Sometimes if you do a certain method to uh, like replicate something or whatever, it can actually make a duplicate. So you think you're actually, or actually it won't make a duplicate. You think you're doing something to an object like a bunch to a bunch of separate objects or different words, but you're actually doing it to the same word. It's kind of uh complex thing to describe but it's just something to be mindful of so as you see here we have capitalized now it has the lowercase a and if i do capitalize dot first it'll give me the first letter of the array or i can also use what's known as element reference and within an array you see how it has zero uh one two three those are numbers ref representing the indices of the array. So all arrays start with zero. And uh, that's just the way most programming languages work. So you can do uh, capitalize uh, and reference it that way. And on the opposite end of that, if you do, uh, you can do capitalize dot last to get the last word in that array, or you can do capitalized. And, and I'm just doing capitalized because that's the name of my particular array dot uh, not dot but uh negative one and so zero is the first word or the first index of the array and then negative one is the uh, last index of the array so i'm going to go ahead and i'll probably just use the uh the words since that's what i've uh, been doing it's just like a stylistic choice at this point though there may be some uh, efficiency at some point as well all right, um, I think that this is working. Um, for the most part, it looks pretty good. Um, there's probably gonna be some error somewhere. Yep, false, false, false. So now we gotta figure out why it's false. So what I'm doing is when I ran it, I got a bunch of falses. Though, as you can see, when I ran the code over here, everything seemed to be working right. But now when I run it in my program, it's not uh, working according to plan. So I'm going to actually, you know what? I commented out all of those. Well, actually, I should probably do that anyway. Oh, let me go ahead and just uh, check out this one here and see what we're getting. Oh, you know what? It's because, uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. So that, that's what's happening is I, I mutated. So it's just uh, referencing that first letter of the array. So I do not want to do that. But let's go ahead and um, just make, see what everything is output. All right, so A clash of kings. So this is something that I totally forgot, which I should have done. Because when I have this array, uh, it's an array of words. But the end result is that I need to have a string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to my algorithm and I'm going to uh, say um, join the array. I'm just going to say, uh, yeah, join the, I'm going to say, um, because in your algorithm, you're trying to be more abstract in general and not too specific at this point. So I'm going to say, uh, and convert the array of words back into a string. Then uh, capitalize the first letter of the string. All right, so I have this here. 
And the reason why uh, this is just returning the A is because in Ruby, I don't think all languages do this, but in Ruby, um, the method, it returns the last evaluated expression within the method. So the last evaluated thing was just capitalize dot first dot capitalize or whatever. But that's not what I want. I mean, I do want that, but I want the full word. So let's maybe change this here. So if I do have capitalized there, and that's good. So I'm going to say capitalize dot join. And just to make sure that everything is working. Oh, I need to use a space. So you, for the join method, you join. You use parentheses to pass in the argument. And my argument is going to be a space. So that way it tells Ruby, hey, for every word, um, separate them with a space. And so we get a clash of kings. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to figure out a way to capitalize the first character without it just returning that. So I think, let me see here. Um, I probably want to do that last, that join. Oh, yeah, when you uh, run stuff over here, it kind of clears out everything on the right side in the terminal. So I would need to redo everything, but I'm just going to copy and paste it since I've already done it. Well, I'll do uh, string equals a clash of kings, and then I'll just paste everything else. Let's try to make it a little more efficient. And then we have uh, words, minor words. Pretty sure all of this is good code, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. All right, so I need to just capitalize the first word. I mean, I, I know how to do it syntactically, but I'm worried about the return value of this method because I know I can just do capitalize zero dot capitalize or upcase. Oh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to a variable. I'm going to initialize a variable and have that be my answer and then have that be the last thing. So um, let's do this. Let's do capitalized uh, dot first dot up case. There we go. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do uh, capitalized dot first dot up case. And then I'm going to say... Uh, Let's see if this works. Might still return that last letter. Oh, we're good. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to join it. And now this should be the correct answer. Got to remember that space. Perfect. Now let's try the other ones. The moment of truth. some falses again no bueno all right let's see what we got here oh no it's not what i wanted to do bummer um hmm. all right so that went unfortunately i lost everything with this i think all right this is the way it is. I have a lot of this like already in a uh, in a sublime text. Let me put that down. So naturally, all that stuff was there before, but I'm just going to go ahead and just crank out the problem.
just one moment. I'm just trying to uh, get everything back to where we had it. That's another thing too, is like regardless of what I like me clicking the backspace, you know, that's a it's a big mess up. But you just have to uh, maintain your composure and just keep pushing on, particularly during like an interview section. So that's a lot of times like uh, interviewers will see that maybe you make a mistake or you do something. It's not so much that your code didn't work or that you didn't make a mistake or you did make a mistake, but it's how do you overcome that and what do you do to fix it? So right now I'm just going to try to crank this out as soon as possible. Okay, so that was correct. We got minor words capitalized. What did I do? I believe it was capitalized that each do. I got some notes that I had in this problem before, but let's see if I can just recall it. So what happened is I forgot to use the uh, destructive method. It was like I was just trying to uh, check it. But for this, I would probably uh, print it first just to make sure that this works. But I'm pretty sure that this logic and syntax is correct. I did it in the wrong spot, but it doesn't matter. That's not what I wanted. Right, yeah, that is that does matter. Because I, I used the destructive method at the wrong time. And that's why I did it uh, destructively mutated everything. So let's see here. Technically, you don't really want to do this. You don't want to be iterating and mutating at the same time. I think it would be okay because I initialize it to another variable. Like whenever you pass like an argument into a method, you don't, it's generally you almost always do not want to mutate the calling object. And the calling object is like the, the object that the argument is being passed into. And so you still don't want to mutate the argument either. All right, so this seemed to work. So we can do capitalize dot each do word if minor words dot include word dot down case. Let's do word dot down case. Okay, so that's capitalized. 
So that worked out, and now I'm going to do the capitalized. And then we'll do answer. Sometimes I do final. So I like final equals capitalized dot join with a space and after all of that the uh, problem solving process clicking the back button on accident now is the moment of truth let's see if our program runs and over the countless hours I've spent programming I've come to expect my code not to work I become more suspicious <laughs> if the code works from the first try than if it doesn't work. So I just naturally now, I just expect it not to work, and then I go from there. But let's see. Oh boy, we got all kinds of stuff here. Argument, wrong number of arguments. Oh, that's because I didn't. This right here is the reason why you need this um, default argument up here. So minor words, I'm going to do equals empty string. Let's see if that's... That's what the problem was. All right. So the reason nothing output it is because I didn't put P in front of everything, but no errors arose when we ran the code. We have true or false as we had before. So let's see why we're getting this here. Actually, let me comment this one out. Do one problem at a time. Yeah, see, I'm not, oh, I did have a case. That was the wrong method. And now is the final, 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 final moment of truth. Let's see here. And I think all of them are true. Hmm, except for that one. What did I do wrong here? I will figure this out. Oh, interesting. Why did um, N not get capitalized? Capitalize that each two word if minor words don't include. Oh. Don't include word.com case, word.down case. Hmm. Let me see. Let me just look at my notes because it's taking a little long. What do I got here? Mm. Trying to use the... Yeah, I solved that a different way before than what I have here. But this should work. Um, I think it was working before I did the backspace before. So let's see. Let's focus on this problem with this particular argument. So let's go with, uh, all right, what, what do we have? Let's do this. Oh, you know what? I bet it's because that's not down case. So maybe I need to, well, it should still be capitalized. Hmm, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I need to make sure that I downcase the 
second argument um, minor words because you remember in that previous uh, I guess iteration or whatever it was earlier when I was going through the array and it wasn't finding the down case version of that word the same thing is happening here so what I need to do is have minor words equals minor words dot down case dot split I think that I think this is the final 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 time. <laughs> and it's not necessarily if you make a mistake because you're going to make a lot of mistakes. It's if uh how you handle it, how do you uh keep your composure and what do you do to arrive at a solution? Sometimes you may need to take a break, go for a walk, come back to it, and you'd be surprised. But if you keep at it, uh you can pick it up. If I can do it, anybody can. It's just, uh, are you going to give up? And there we go. Well, thank you for checking out this video. Uh, sorry it took a little bit longer than I expected. But uh, if you watch this whole thing, that's awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll, be, I'll be doing a few other of these programming videos, perhaps. I know they're probably pretty useful. Since I spend like all day doing this stuff, so when I make my other videos, I like to talk about interesting discoveries with like archaeology or whatever or video games and all the other stuff because uh you know even doing this uh <laughs> as enjoyable as it is after a while you know you want to take a break here and there but uh, if you like the video uh let me know uh if you want me to try to go over some other uh, basic programming concepts uh, let me know as well thanks for checking this video out until the next time take care And this is a little bit longer of an exit than I was anticipating because I have to go over here to stop the recording. But see ya.